Now that we've got a circuit and we can measure some things about it, we can make some adjustments and see what effect they have. So if I come and click on my voltage source, then there is a panel on the right hand side that has some options that I can change. Right now the voltage amplitude is 5 volts. So that's the peak to peak amplitude from the highest point on the wave to the lowest point on the wave. When I run this and I look at the grapher, I can see that indeed there is 5 volts from the bottom to the top of my wave. If I change this amplitude and make it 10 volts and run this again, and go back to my grapher, now we can't see the top of the wave, so I can make my maximum voltage 11 volts here, and now we can see that the wave does go up to a highest amplitude of 10 volts. There are also some other things, so there is a voltage offset. Right now it's 0 volts, so the wave is starting at 0 volts, but I can change this, so I can make it 1 volt, for instance, and I can run this, and then go to the grapher. Now the wave is starting at 1 volt and going up to 11 volts. We can see that the amplitude is still 10. So from the lowest point to the highest point on my wave is still 10 volts, but now there is a 1 volt offset. So it goes from 1 to 11 instead of 0 to 10. I can also make this offset negative. So if I make this minus 5, and run this again. I can adjust my uh, minimum and maximum values here. And now I can see that the wave is centered at 0 volts. So it goes from minus 5 volts to 5 volts. Again, the amplitude is still 10 volts from the highest point on the lowest point on this wave, so we say it's 10 volts peak to peak. We've just changed the offset. Another thing that I can change about the wave is the frequency. So over here, the frequency is not set directly. Instead, the period is set. But remember, period is just 1 over frequency frequency is 1 over period, so there's a, an inverse relationship between them. So um, if I make my period uh, 2 milliseconds now, instead of 1, and I run the simulation, um, now we can see that uh, the wave takes uh, two milliseconds to complete one full period. Okay, But you might notice that the wave has kind of shifted so that it looks like it's leaning to the right now. Okay, If we go back to the schematic, we can see that the fall time is specified as well. So the fall time is the amount of time that it takes to go from the highest point to the lowest point. Right now it's half a millisecond. The period is two milliseconds. So in other words, it takes one and a half milliseconds to go all the way to its highest point, and then only a half a millisecond to come back down. So that's why it looks like it's leaning to the right. Okay? If we want it to be evened out again, we could make the fall time one millisecond, and run our simulation again. and now the signal is symmetrical again. 
we can also change the type of wave that we are creating. So I can uh, click on my waveform generator here and delete that, and I can replace it with another signal source. So for instance, I could replace it with a clock voltage source. And wire up a connection there and up here. And then I'll move my probe down so that it's connected to the wire. Now when we run this, we can see that we are creating a square wave. The square wave has many of the same options that we looked at with the triangle wave. So it's got the, the voltage, so that's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage again from the highest point to the lowest point on the wave. There's the frequency. Um, now we have a duty cycle instead of a fall time. The duty cycle is the percentage of the time that the wave is high versus the total wave time. So 50% duty cycle means that the wave is high for half the time and low for half the time. 75% duty cycle would mean that it was high for three quarters of the time and low for only one quarter of the time. The rise time and the fall time are the amount of time that it takes for the wave to go from the lowest point to the highest point. So on a square wave, those should be very short because um, the wave goes almost straight up in the air and almost straight back down. But of course, nothing is perfect, so it always takes some amount of time. So you can change those properties of this wave. We could make the frequency a bit lower, so maybe 500 hertz, and we could make the duty cycle 75%, say, and run that and see how that looks. So now you can see that it's high for 3 quarters of the time and low only a quarter of the time. And there are two milliseconds per division, um, which means that each cycle takes two milliseconds, which means that it is operating at 500 cycles per second, or 500 hertz. So those are some of the things that you can change about the signals that we are creating.